Hi there, the Story Ninja is back with a special story. We were given a little task of finding something along a particular theme and well we found fly eagle fly. It's an African tale so there are many versions of the story but this particular one has been retold by Christopher Grigorowski and the illustrations are by Nikki Daly. So just let's have a look again. I'm sure you have an idea what Fly Eagle Fly is about now. Definitely there's an eagle in the story. So come along and get comfortable. Find a spot nice and cozy. This is slightly longer than our usual stories, but I know you'll want to find out what happens in the end. So let's get started. I will show you some pictures just by the way. A farmer went out one day to search for a lost calf. The little herd boys had come back without it the evening before, and that night there had been the most terrible storm. So the farmer went to the valley and searched. He searched by the river. He searched among the reeds, behind the rocks, and in the rushing water. He wandered over the hillside and through the dark and tangled forests where everything began then out again along the muddy cattle tracks. He searched in the long thatch grass, taller than his own head. He climbed the slopes of the high mountain with its rocky cliffs rising to the sky. He called out all the time, hoping that the calf might hear, but also because he felt so alone. His shouts echoed off the cliffs. The river roared in the valley below. He climbed up a gully in case the calf had huddled there to escape the storm. And that was where he stopped. For there, on a ledge of rock, close enough to touch, he saw the most unusual sight. An eagle chick, very young, hatched from its egg a day or two before and then blown from its nest by the terrible storm. He reached out and cradled it in both hands. He would take it home and care for it, and home he went, still calling in case the calf might hear. So he was almost home when the children ran out to meet him. The calf came back by itself, they shouted. Ah, oh, he was very pleased. He showed the eagle chick to his wife and children, then placed it carefully in the warm kitchen, among the hens and chicks, under the watchful eye of the roosters. The eagle is the king of the birds, he said, but we shall train it to be a chicken. So the eagle lived among the chickens, learning their ways. His children called their friends to see the strange bird. For as it grew, living on the bits and pieces put out for the chickens, it began to look quite different from any chicken they had ever seen. I'm sure you will agree, an eagle is definitely different to a chicken. One day, a friend dropped in for a visit. He and the farmer sat in the door, or in the doorway of the kitchen, and um, smoked their pipes. The friend saw the bird among the chickens. Hey, that's not a chicken. It's an eagle. The farmer smiled at him and said, hmm, Of course, it's a chicken. Look, it walks like a chicken, talks like a chicken, it eats like a chicken. It thinks like a chicken. Of course it's a chicken. But the friend was not convinced. I will show you that it is an eagle, he said. Oh, go ahead, said the farmer. The farmer's children helped his friend catch the bird. It was fairly heavy, but he lifted it above his head and said, You are not a chicken, but an eagle. You belong not to the earth, but to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. Remember that bit. You are not a chicken, but an eagle. You belong not to the earth, but to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. 
The bird stretched out its wings as the farmer and his family had seen it do before. But it looked about, saw the chickens feeding, and jumped down to scratch with them for food. I told you it was a chicken, the farmer said, and roared with laughter. Oh my gosh! How could his friend think anything else? Next day the friend was back. Farmer, he said, I will prove to you that this is no chicken but an eagle. Bring me a ladder. With the large bird under one arm, he struggled up the slippery thatch of the tallest hut. What is he up to? The farmer doubled up with laughter. Oh my, it eats chicken food. It thinks like a chicken. It is a chicken. The friend swaying on the top of the hut took the eagle's head, pointed it to the sky and said, You are not a chicken but an eagle. You belong not to the earth, but to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. Again, the great bird stretched out its wings. It trembled. And the claws that clasped his hand opened. Fly, eagle, fly, the man cried. But the bird scrambled out of his hands, slid down the thatch and sailed in among the chickens. Oh, there was much laughter. Must have been a funny sight to the villagers. Very early next morning, on the third day, the farmer's dogs began to bark. A voice was calling outside in the darkness. Who could it be? The farmer ran to the door. It was his friend uh, again. Give me one more chance of the birdie big. Do you know the time? It's long before dawn. Oh, you crazy. Come with me. Fetch the bird. Reluctantly, the farmer went into the kitchen, stepping over his sleeping children, and picked up the bird which was fast asleep among the chickens. The two men set off, disappearing into the darkness. What is this friend up to? Where are you going? The farmer asked. Oh, very sleepy. Oh. To the mountains where you found the bird. And why at this ridiculous time of the night? So that our eagle may see the sun rise above the mountains and follow it into the sky where it belongs. They went into the valley and crossed the river, the friend leading the way. The bird was very heavy and too large to carry comfortably, but the friend insisted on taking it himself. Hurry, he said, or the dawn will arrive before we do. The first light crept into the sky as they began to climb the mountain. Below them they could see the river snaking like a long, thin ribbon through the golden grasslands, the forest and the felt stretching down towards the sea. The wispy clouds in the sky were pink at first and then began to shimmer with golden brilliance. Sometimes their path was dangerous as it clung to the side of the mountain, crossing narrow shelves of rock and taking them into dark crevices and out again. They were both panting, especially the friend who was carrying the bird. At last, he said, This will do. He looked down the cliff and saw the ground hundreds of metres below. They were very near the top. What do you think is going to happen next? I'm wondering too. Mm, carefully, the friend carried the bird onto a ledge of rock. He set it down so that it looked towards the east and began talking to it. The farmer chuckled. It talks only chicken talk. But the friend talked on, telling the bird about the sun, how it gives life to the world, how it rains in the heavens, giving light to each new day. Look at the sun, eagle. And when it rises, rise with it. You belong to the sky, not to the earth. At that moment, the sun's first rays shot out over the mountains, and suddenly the world was ablaze with light. 
the golden sun throws majestically, dazzling them. The great bird stretched out its wings to greet the sun and feel the life-giving warmth on its feathers. The farmer was quiet. The friend said, You belong not to the earth, but to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. He clambered back to the farmer. All was silent. Nothing moved. The eagle's head stretched up, its wings stretched outwards, its legs leaned forward as its claws clutched the rock. And then, without really moving, feeling the updraft of a wind more powerful than any man or any bird, the great eagle leaned forward and was swept upward, higher and higher, lost to sight in the brightness of the rising sun, never again to live among the chickens. So I'm sure you are thinking very, very hard about this story. Because there are so many messages waiting for us in those words. But here we have a note from the author. And I'll share that with you too. The powerful parable I've retold here is the work of James E.K. Agre, who was born in 1875. Now that is a very long time ago. And he lived in Ghana at the time a British colony called the Gold Coast. He spent the latter part of his life in the USA, mostly working as a pastor and educator among black Americans. He also took part in a number of education commissions visiting Africa, in the process touring most of the continent. Agre was particularly active in the field of race relations and became known as Agre of Africa. He is remembered for the oft-quoted statement, you can play a tune of sorts on the white keys, and you can play a tune of sorts on the black keys, but for harmony, you must use both the black and the white. When Agre told his story of the eagle, he used it to end by saying, My people of Africa, we were created in the image of God, but men have made us think we are chickens, and we still think we are, but we are actually eagles. Don't be content with the food of chickens. Stretch forth your wings and fly. At this, children would run excitedly around their playgrounds with arms stretched like wings of eagles. Let's have a look. And I'm sure many of us play like that too, don't we? Now in 1981, when our seven-year-old daughter, Rosalind, was dying, I wanted her to understand that we are all born to be eagles, who are lifted up by the smite of the spirit, like the wind-borne flight of an eagle. So I retold the story and dedicated it to her, setting it in the trance sky, where I worked among the Kosa-speaking people as an Anglican priest. Now her two older sisters have given us our first grandchildren, and I have dedicated this book to them. So what a beautiful story. And just one little note from Nikki Daly, the illustrator. In 1982, when I first illustrated Fly Eagle Fly, full color illustrations were a luxury, seldom seen in South African children's books. The first version of the story was published as a small format two color book. A few years later, it was out of print, but it was not forgotten by the readers it had inspired. Now as our new and precious democracy gives us wings to fly, a new edition with full colour pictures celebrates the flight of many eagles, the children of South Africa to whom I dedicate this book. So I hope we have an opportunity that once we can get out to libraries, that we go and find this one in your local. Please like, love and share the story in just so that more children and adults can get to hear about us. So until next time, thanks for listening.